Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 95, Solving Your Productivity Puzzle, presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pedlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we start hearing how we can become a little more productive in each day and begin the conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, that I have the world's largest database of off-ice stick handling, passing, and hockey shooting drills, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person, off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's SweetHockeyCoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. Again, welcome to the Hockey Journey Podcast, where today we're going to explore the intersection of sports, personal growth, and success. In today's episode, we'll be discussing one of the most important skills for any athlete or professional, productivity. Whether you're a hockey player looking to improve your game, or a business owner striving for success, being productive is essential to achieving your goals. To help us dive deeper into this topic, I'll be referencing a couple powerful books that have crossed my path over the years. Organized Tomorrow Today by Jason Selk and Tom Bartow, and Making Life a Masterpiece by Orson Sweat Martin. Each of these titles offers valuable insights and strategies for boosting productivity and achieving success. So if you're struggling to stay focused, manage your time effectively, or achieve your goals, this episode is for you as you start preparing for a productive off-season of training and personal improvement. I'll be sharing practical tips and strategies that you can apply to your own life and work so you can start solving your productivity puzzle and achieving the results you want. So let's get started. Book number one, Organize Tomorrow, Today. Eight Ways to Retrain Your Mind to Optimize Performance at Work and in Life by Jason Selk and Tom Bartow. Quote number one. In Organize Tomorrow Today, we're going to show you how to embrace channel capacity instead of fighting against it. You're going to learn how to make decisions, establish priorities, and light your own motivating fire instead of continuing to chase the counterintuitive concept of multitasking. Most people still seem to believe that being busy is the equivalent of being important, but the highly successful have learned that being busy is a waste of time. Being productive is the goal. Knowing something doesn't change your life. Doing something does. Getting through this book or a class is one thing, but there's a huge difference between acquiring information and understanding it. There's even a wider gap between understanding it and implementing it, or actually doing it. This is why there is such an emphasis on organized tomorrow today to avoid trying to master all eight concepts at once. Doing so is a recipe for inaction and failure. Success comes from one dedicated and focused step at a time. The most successful people we see are the ones who take this information and use it in real life, every day. Follow the template and you're getting a playbook for speeding up the process of getting from information acquisition to skill implementation. Jason and Tom call it the owner's manual for doers. End quote. Quote number two, the two most important questions for tomorrow. To set yourself up on the right track, ask yourself those two critical questions. Number one, What are the three most important things I need to get done tomorrow? And number two, what is the single most important task I must get done? The questions work within your brain's channel capacity to give you direction and prioritization in manageable doses. When you start your day, you know the three most important things you need to get done by the end of the day, and you know which of those three things is the big 
glow-in-the-dark priority. You'll be amazed at how much clearer your decision-making becomes and how much more efficiently you'll use your time just by taking this simple organizational step. End quote. Quote number three, you rockin' the Ziegernick effect? When you go to the effort to make a prioritized list of what you need to do the next day, you're essentially opening a loop in your mind. As you sleep, your brain will automatically start preparing for the successful closing of those loops. It's known as the Ziegernick effect. In the 1920s, Russian psychology researcher Bluma Ziegernick quantified the phenomenon after her professor, Kurt Lewin, noticed that waiters who hadn't been paid for an order had much more recall of the details of those orders than they did for orders that had been paid. Working from Ziegernick's research, Lewin came up with the concept of task-specific tension, which persists in both the conscious and subconscious mind until the task is completed. In other words, the mind doesn't like unfinished business. High-level mathematicians and successful writers have been using this technique for years as a tool for pushing their work forward. Before going to bed, they take a few minutes to read over the mathematical or literary work they did during the day, especially if they reached a plateau or feel stuck. The mind then works all night to close the loop, and they wake up in the morning with inspiration. It seems magical, but it isn't so much magical as the result of effective priming of the mental pump. End quote. Quote number four, are you nailing it? What does nailing it mean? If you've truly mastered one positive change, we call it nailing it. It's become a popular shorthand catchphrase with many of our students. For you to have fully integrated the improvement and the changes it requires, it means that for three consecutive months, you've been able to complete the change on a daily basis 90% of the time or better. Whatever improvement you choose, whether it's organizing tomorrow today or committing to doing the mental workout, you need to be able to do it 9 out of 10 days for three months straight with no excuses. If you can't do it, it means you need to increase your discipline or commitment to a smaller level of intensity. Get started by proving to yourself that you can nail it, even if it's a smaller commitment. You can always increase later on. An essential element of performance is for people to learn to trust themselves. When you prove 90% of the time that you can nail it, you can't help but grow your confidence and self-trust. End quote. Quote number five, fight throughs equal the key to habit installation. This is the point where I can do this turns into this is harder than I thought or is it really going to matter if I miss a day to making it through to the third phase when the habit becomes second nature. You need to be able to win two or three of these important fight through battles with yourself. The amazing things that world class athletes are able to accomplish are usually chalked up to freak ability and that certainly can be a factor. But a much bigger factor in those athletes reaching that level is the relentless ability to consistently win their fight throughs. End quote. Quote number six, here's your new mental toughness workout. Your mind is a muscle just like your bicep. If you want your bicep to become stronger, you must complete bicep curls on a regular basis. The same holds true with your mind. If you want to become mentally tougher, you must complete mental workouts consistently. Muscle deterioration begins within 72 hours of your last workout. Just as this is the case with your bicep, it also holds true with your brain. The goal should be to never let two days go by without some type of physical activity, nor should you go two days without completing a mental workout. End quote. Quote number seven, how to be strong plus resilient. Strong, resilient people have what we call Relentless Solution Focus, or RSF. If a person with a great RSF was in the same situation and lost that big client, he or she wouldn't be some kind of emotionless robot. The loss would sting. But the immediate, laser-sharp focus would be on finding the solution path 
and doing it in less than 60 seconds. We say solution path because many, many problems aren't solved with one lightning strike of an idea. Obviously, a solution is a process and there are steps to that process. In RSF, your goal when presented with a problem is to identify one step within 60 seconds that you can take that will make the situation better, even if only by a small increment of improvement. RSF is not about finding the perfect solution, but rather about just identifying some kind of improvement. It's called the 1% solution, because any improvement whatsoever to the current situation is part of a solution. The plus one concept has been credited numerous times with making the previously deemed impossible actually possible. End quote. End quote number eight. Repetition, 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 repetition. Repetition, 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 repetition. Mastery only comes from effort and repetition. You wouldn't expect your five-year-old to be able to tie her shoes the first time. In the words of Zen master Suzuki, if you lose the spirit of repetition, your practice will become difficult. This was one of the absolute cornerstones of Coach Wooden's teaching. End quote. Book number two, Making Life a Masterpiece by Orison Sweat Martin. Quote number one, No one can make the most of himself until he looks upon his life as a magnificent possibility. The material for a great masterpiece, to mar or spoil, which would be a tragedy. Without such an ideal, without an ambition to live the life triumphant, the life worthwhile, that which will call out the largest, completest, superbest man or woman one is capable of being, there is no possibility of true success. End quote. Quote number two, true success. How few of us realize that true success, which is open to all, is not measured by the accomplishment of some great thing, that it does not consist of being wealthy, famous, or powerful, but that it is the crown of all who honestly, earnestly do their best and live the everyday simple life, with all that it involves in the practice of the commonplace duties of every day. It is by the exercise of the common, homely virtues, it is by trying to do everything one attempts to a complete finish, by trying to be scrupulously honest in every transaction, by always ringing true to our friendships, even by holding a helpful, accommodating attitude toward those about us, by trying to fulfill the best of our ability, the obligation to be noble, to be loyal to our highest ideals, it is by such things as these that we make successful lives. End quote. Quote number three, human bulbs attached to the great universal current. We get light from the electric current in proportion to the number of candle power in the electric bulb. The filament in a four power candle lamp cannot take off the light of a 16 candle power lamp. We are human bulbs attached to the great universal current of force and power, and the light which we give off depends on the candle power of our lamps. Many people go through life with a little dim four candle light, not because they lack power to generate a stronger light, but because they never learn how to express their power. Why be a candle when you can be an arc light? End quote. Quote number four, you are the captain of your life ship. What would become of a sea captain who whenever he saw fog settling down on the waters or a storm coming up, would turn his ship around and sail back to the port he had left. You know he would lose his job and be branded as an incompetent and a coward. Every sea captain keeps his ship true to the compass and he plows through fogs, storms, or hurricanes to his distant goal. You are the captain of your life ship and it is up to you to bring it into port grandly. If you haven't the qualities of a good sea captain, your ship is in danger. Downright hard work, a purpose which never flags, a grit and nerve which never retreat, these are the qualities that make life victorious. End quote. Bonus quote number five. Nobody ever drifted into anything desirable. 
It would be impossible for a ship to come into a certain port without a compass as it would be for a man or woman to make any headway on the sea of life without a purpose. Nobody ever drifts into anything desirable. To get the thing worthwhile, you must know where your goal lies and you must make straight for it, past all the rocks and sandbars. End quote. Bonus quote number six, fresh minds plus first class work. Many think that all great achievement depends upon unceasing industry, that if they keep everlastingly at it, if they are always at work, their accomplishment will be greater than if they work less and play more. There could not be a greater mistake. Clear, strong thinking springs from freshness and enthusiasm, and these qualities are not produced by strenuous driving methods. There is no greater delusion than that we accomplish more by working a great many hours each day, straining mind and body to the limit of endurance, than by working fewer hours with less straining, less fatigue, but with greater freshness and intensity. First class work is impossible to brains exhausted by lack of recreation and sleep. End quote. Bonus quote number seven, big little things. It may seem a very far cry from such trivialities to the great catastrophes of life, but to my mind, the highest courage, the finest and most complete self-mastery, are no more than the result of the habit of control and steadiness in the small things of life. The man or woman who meets the little things calmly will be prepared for the more serious or the unexpected and will ultimately, through force of habit, attain that sublime order of courage poise, self-mastery, which even the greatest calamity cannot shake. And though his highest courage may never be put to the test, the one who has habituated himself to self-control in the little things will have gained the strength of character that will make him a person of mark in every situation of life. End quote. And bonus quote number eight. What could you do with an hour a day? I wish it were possible to blazon on the sky, where it would burn itself into the consciousness of every youth, the marvelous results of even one hour a day spent in persistent, concentrated, earnest self-culture. What young man is really too busy to give an hour a day to self-improvement, self-enlargement? One hour a day for a short time, profitably employed, would enable men of ordinary capacity to master a complete science. One hour a day in ten years would make an ignorant man a well-informed man. In an hour a day, a boy or a girl could read twenty pages thoughtfully, more than seven thousand pages in a year, or eighteen large volumes. Think of the mighty possibilities of two, four, yes, even six hours a day that are often thrown away by young men and women in frivolous amusement. End quote. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 95, Solving Your Productivity Puzzle. Today we explored the intersection of sports, personal growth, and success, and discussed some valuable insights and strategies for boosting productivity and achieving success. Remember, productivity is not about being busy, but about being productive and achieving your goals. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed learning about ways to be more productive. Lastly, if you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon. And do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.